Hello and welcome to this video on rounding to decimal places. Now let's just say that we were recording someone's 100 metre uh, running time. I know that Usain Bolt's time in, I think, the Berlin Games was 9.54 or something, something, something seconds. But the thing is, sometimes we need to discard some of these digits. We, we don't want to have that much accuracy and we might just say, oh, his time is 9.54 seconds. So we're just keeping some of the digits after the decimal pace and discarding the others to kind of reduce the accuracy. Now we already saw in, a, in the previous video that when we want to round, we decide up to which digit you want to keep. That might be the same if we're rounding to the nearest 10 or 100, etc. And then you discard everything after or a place with a zero all the digits after. So let's just say we wanted to have 387 to the nearest 100. Then what we do is we keep everything up to the hundreds digit. So there's the hundreds digit and then we discard everything after. So we're going to discard the eight tens and just replace with zero, so we have no tens, and we're going to discard the seven units and just replace it with zero units. But you remember, we have to check the digit after first. So the digit after the hundreds digit, is that greater or equal to five? Yes, it is. So that three goes up to four, and then everything after we discard so it's replaced with zero. And it's exactly the same principle with rounding to a certain number of decimal places. So let's just say we wanted uh, 3.4278 and we wanted to round it to one decimal place. Then we decide up to which digit we want to keep. Well, one decimal place, we look at the first digit after the decimal place. That means we want to keep up to this digit. And then as before, with the nearest 100 example, we check the next digit. Is it greater or equal to 5? No, it isn't. So the 4 stays as it is, and we discard everything after. So when we discard it, we're effectively replacing it with 0. But we can just write 3.4. We don't need to write 3.4000. So it's just 3.4. In fact, we definitely don't want to put 3.40 because then we'd be giving two digits after the decimal point. But when we say to one decimal place, we only want to keep one digit after the decimal point. What about to two decimal places? And we can write to two DP, DP for decimal places. Well, we keep up to the second digit after the decimal point. So we're keeping up to the two. Then we check the next digit. Is that greater or equal to five? Yes, it is, so that 2 goes up to 3, so we have 3.43. Now, let's do these examples in a table. So we've got the different numbers on the left, and I want to round it to one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places, and four decimal places. And we've, so we first got 3.23041. Now we want to round it to one decimal place, so we look up to the first digit after the decimal point, now we check the next digit. Is that greater or equal to 5? No, it isn't. So the 2 stays as it is, so we got 3.2. What about two decimal places? We want to look up to the second digit after the decimal point. Check the next digit. Is it greater or equal to 5? No, it isn't. So it stays as 3. So we got 3.23. What about three decimal places? Well, we check up to the third digit after the decimal point. That's 0. We check the next digit, 4. Is that greater or equal to 5? No, it isn't. So it's 3.230. And you might think, oh, do I need that zero at the end? That's the same as 3.23. And it would be wrong to put 3.23 because you're only giving two digits after the decimal point when we want it to three decimal places. And that's absolutely crucial. It's a bit like if I ran a race and I ran 10.0 seconds, that's very different to saying I ran 10 seconds, even though it's the same length of time. I'm saying that the tenth digit of my time was zero. Whereas if I just said that my time was 10 seconds, it might have been that my time was, say, 10.4 seconds, but I just happened to round it to the nearest second. Whereas here, I couldn't have had a time of 10.4. It had to be 10.0. Right, what about four decimal places? Well, one, two, three, four. We, look at the, we check the next digit, is it greater or equal to 5? No, so it's just 3.2304. So that was a simple one. What about the next one? So we've got 6.76485. What about to one decimal place? Check this first digit, it's 7. We look at the digit after, is that greater or equal to 5? Yes, it is, so that 7 goes up to 8, so it's 6.8. What about to two decimal places? Well, we keep everything up to the six. That's the second digit after decimal place. Check the next digit. Is it greater or equal to five? No, it isn't. So that six stays as it is. We've got 6.76. Three decimal places. One, two, three. 
We check the next digit, is it greater or equal to five? Yes, it is, so that four goes up to five. So we have 6.765, and then four decimal places, we keep up to the eight. Check the next digit, is it greater or equal to five? Yes, it is, so that eight goes up to nine, 6.76. For nine and discard everything after, so we discard the five. What about the last one? So we got 28.98073. So to one decimal place, we check up to the first digit, it's 28.9. Check the next digit, is that greater or equal to five? Yes, it is. So that nine goes up to, oh, it goes up to 10, but that means we have a carry, so that eight goes up to nine. So we have 29.0, and again, it's absolutely crucial we put the 0, .0 because by saying we want it to one decimal place, we need to make sure there's one digit after the decimal place. What about to two decimal places? 28.98, check the next digit. Is it greater or equal to five? No, it isn't, so the eight stays as it is. We have 28.98. What about three decimal places? One, two, three. Check the next digit, is it greater than five? Yes, it is, so that zero goes up to one. So it's 28.981. And then four, it's just gonna be 28.9807. And the seven is not gonna go up because three is less than five.